It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the Sunshine State. It's the Jaguars and the Buccaneers, and it's coming up next. Few better places in the country weather-wise this time of year than this one right here, Tampa, Florida, and beautiful Raymond James Stadium. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on their in-state rivals, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, the vibe, a different one here in Tampa this year. This is year 1AB after Brady. What can they do to help soften the blow? I would say try and lean on the defense a little bit more. I think they'll play a lot better in 2023. We know how exotic they can be with how they get after the quarterback. Make sure they slow people down running the ball as well. Give this offense a chance to grow because they are under new management. Well, meanwhile, for the Jaguars, the rebuild under Doug Peterson is right on track. And listen, nobody's going to get wildly excited about 9-8, and eight, which they were last year. I get that. But when that comes on the heels of 3-14 and 14 and 1-15, and 15, certainly a step in the right direction. And the biggest stride they can make this year is on defense, 28th against the pass last year. And just moving into the middle of the pack, that could buy up a couple more wins and put them in a great spot come playoff time. teams just about a three and a half hour drive from each other on Florida's I-75. The Jags and Bucks are underway. From the end zone, here's Devin Tompkins. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. And he's a guy who plays with a lot of emotion. He's learned how to channel it really positively because when he throws the football downfield and makes a big play, he'll be the first guy downfield to celebrate with you. But also, when his team needs that confidence, when they need that jolt, they turn to him, and he's ready to provide it. Mayfield going to the air right away. And his first pass is incomplete. Well, that's not the way you want to start. A first pass attempt and a first drop all in one. Well, you've got plenty of time to make up for it, but obviously not the way you want to get things started. Got to shake that off and get going. Now a second and ten. Throwing Mayfield. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield or man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. So two incompletions have led him to an early third and ten. Mayfield down. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. Well, three and out to start the game would have been a real disappointment. So this is a nice job of finding something you think will work and executing it. And they're able to keep this opening drive going. They will run for the first time here with White. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Brandon, that's what you call being manhandled at the point of attack. And I know the offensive line gets a lot of blame for that one. But occasionally, the defense just knows what you're going to do. Maybe they scouted it perfectly. Maybe someone tipped it off. But on that play, it had no chance. Now Mayfield. To the sideline and incomplete. Man coverage is certainly a staple of their defense as built for plays like that, forcing that incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. 
Mayfield to throw it. This ball complete to Trey Palmer. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 31-yard line. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 down at the 31. Now back to the ground game with White. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, Hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. Mayfield's throw taken in by Palmer. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Another completion right there. And again, Charles, good time in the pocket. That offensive line on this opening drive been really solid they've been more than solid they've really tamped down the pass rush and kept him safe in the pocket able to look around find his target and deliver he's got to make sure he tells the offensive line in the huddle thanks fellas let's keep it going that'll give him eight that time and they'll be left with second and a couple well that's not just his first not his second already his third completion here on the opening drive and i, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game one of their top priorities and the top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. They give him two yards there as they're set up now with a first and goal. Mayfield on play action, and they're going to get to him, a sack. Sacked back at the nine-yard line. Josh Allen, the blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. Well, if you're going to throw the ball on first and goal from the two, the worst thing that should result is an incompletion for you offensively. But Brandon, this is a different type of football. Back in my day, first and goal from the two, a lot of big people with big neck rolls, they were on the field trying to ram it into the end zone. Now a give up the middle. This is White. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Rashad White, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And that one gives the Bucs a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time, and they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. And you want to talk about enormous expectations being placed on a quarterback. How about what Trevor Lawrence faced coming out of college, but the good thing for him, he's used to it. He had the same type of expectations leaving high school and going to Clemson. They always expect him to be a franchise savior, whatever team he joins. And to his credit, he shouldered those expectations and he's doing everything in his power to follow through. On first down, Lawrence. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. 
He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. He'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Well, it's almost football 101 that you preach to your safeties. Don't let anyone get behind you. You're the last line of defense. But he didn't let the play come to him. He went to the play. How about that read and recognition and finishing off that one behind the line of scrimmage? On second down, ETN once more. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. I guess that was a little better. He got back to the line of scrimmage there after the loss on first down, but now you're still dealing with a third and long. So let's put on our offense coordinator hat. They've been very aggressive against the run the last two plays. I'm thinking screen right here. Let him come get the quarterback and dump it off. And there could be some room to roam. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. Back deep for the Bucs is Devin Tompkins. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense. No, no. And that hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. So first and 10 after a big mistake on fourth down with a penalty. Lawrence will throw. A short throw there to Strange. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. First and 10, it's ETN. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Second and six. Another toad for ETN. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. How about the job there on the outside? Shed the wide receiver and was able to make the tackle on the perimeter. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. Now Lawrence to throw. And he is caught. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A very important third down conversion right there because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. ETN. 
Looking for a signal, but none forthcoming. They stopped him shy of the goal line. No gain on the play, and it's going to be second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Once more, ETN. And this time, he is into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. McManus's point after is good, and we are tied at seven. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. To throw Mayfield. And this one is incomplete. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Mayfield. And that will be incomplete. Partner, we've got ourselves a ball game, and those guys on defense, they came to play. Slipped up on their first series, but they're definitely settling in now and letting it be known that points won't come so easy again. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Back deep for Jacksonville, the dangerous Jamal Agnew. It'll be a net of 39, 41-yard punt, two on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And the momentum just continuing to build and build for them. They had the touchdown, their last drive to tie the game. Now their defense does its job. And Charles, all of a sudden, they've got a chance to capture the lead here. And we're seeing a really nice exhibition of what coaches love to call complimentary football. Offense gets a tie, defense does its job, gets the ball right back, and their teammates now have momentum. What a nice job they're doing, all doing it together. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Now Lawrence. His throw incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well. And every now and then, they don't come down with the football. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Lawrence. Screenplay. Here's ETN. On the other side of midfield at the 45. 
nine yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. well. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. Lawrence going to throw again. Completes it to Evan Ingram. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Well, following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Lawrence. And this complete right side of the tight end, Farrell. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. And that is caught. It's Ridley. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. A well-executed 22-yard gain. And time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, be able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. Bigsby. Will get down close to the goal line, but not in, as he'll be marked down at the run. Give him two yards on that one, second and goal down. Good work there, holding him out on first down, and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? Second and goal from the one. They'll try to run with ETN, and he'll take this into the end zone, a touchdown. Jacksonville. Travis Etienne with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. So two drives, two touchdowns here in this first quarter, and he's got both of them. But he's certainly setting himself up for a big game here, and I think if the play caller doesn't get in his own way, they should keep riding him the entire way of this game. Until the defense proves they can stop him, that's what I would call Extra point from McManus is good. And that makes the score 14 to 7. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Here's Devin Tompkins on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. The Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now? is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. On second down, Mayfield again. It's caught by Mike Evans. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across 
across the 40 yard line. It's a gain of 13 for number 13 and it gives him a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they've put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Through one quarter, 14-7 our score. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got it with a first and 10. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. This is caught by Evans. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 36 yards on the play. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just saw receivers find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. He completes it to Evans. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. They'll go up the middle with White. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Rashad White with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bucs are an extra point away from evening this one up. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And we are tied at 14. to about the 26 yard line just across the 25 and out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go and right now we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on both sides moving the football scoring points it's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one I mean we haven't even left the first half Charles and we're certainly on pace for a shootout an excellent start for both offenses the fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board as a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? 
First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Give every member of that unit a ton of credit for ripping off such a big gain there because you don't get free for that many yards on a counter or misdirection without everybody selling the heck out of it. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Now Lawrence. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard at the 46-yard line. From the 46, here's second and a yard. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. A give to ETN running right. Down to about the 37. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defense in front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Here's Lawrence to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Now they need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. Lawrence. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth. Both of these offenses happened their way so far, so maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely, and that sack finally a first step in the right direction for a stop. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Devin Tompkins deep to return it. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, why? Well, I wouldn't change it. it up until they showed me a reason to do so. The drive starts with a run by White. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Now they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they had three tight ends in on that set. And these guys are punching really well. I use boxing analogies a lot. A lot of coaches have told me that when you line up to run the football, it's 10 fist fights along the line of scrimmage, right? You've got to win your share. These three tight ends, they almost always win their fist fights. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. From the 43, here's second down and two. Here's Mayfield. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. And this offense on third down today, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White, and he is going to have a box first down as they get five there on third and two. 
I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry, and they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. They stay on the ground with White. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. On second down, they'll run with White. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Mayfield now from the 50. is going to be incomplete. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. Jake Camarda sent on now to punt this away. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his pass incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Throwing again, Lawrence. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That one's all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Levante David, and his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. And I think this is a situation where a quarterback coach in the sideline is going to talk to a signal caller and say, listen, it's third and long, and it's still early in the game. Let's not force things here. If we don't feel good about it, let's just check something down and pump the football. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie. And they start first and 10. First down, here's White. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Defensively, we always know that he is tough and run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. They overload him that time on the safety blitz, and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. Well, there was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving him exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. 
Looked like they were set up defensively in a zone coverage, but somehow they found a seam because that receiver all alone by rights, that should have been a touchdown, but somehow this ball's overthrown. Here's Jake Camarda now. Uh, he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Jaguars offense ready to set up shop here again. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Now second and seven from the 23. Lawrence will throw. That's complete to his tight end, Farrell. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle. You put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. On well, second down, ETN once more. And this will be a Jaguars first down as the tackle made at about the 43-yard line. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first half highlights and analysis from a back and forth first half that we've seen. No gain on the screen there at second down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips to play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. And sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that. That's why they're able to get to him on it. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. It's Devin White, the linebacker. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. But just a lot going on there in the middle of the field, and this one winds up a turnover. Yeah, the running crossing route here, and the idea of it is to get defenders confused about who to go with. But if you throw it too early, sometimes it's your quarterback that gets confused. And here, he throws it into coverage and gets it intercepted. So out come the Bucs now. And now they start in plus territory following that turnover as they'll try to get some points here before halftime. the interception Mayfield here's White they set up the screen and they'll get him down after a pickup of eight second and two and a really nice play call there to start the drive especially if your team has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield you come out and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit and they did a little screen pass back door to them, and that time worked well for a solid game now Mayfield that's complete to his receiver, Godwin. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. Third and four. From the 
shotgun. It's Mayfield. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw complete there to Moore. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. So eight yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. Mayfield to throw it. He gets it over the middle to Palmer. And they are able to stop it, but he does take it all the way to the two. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. White. He is going nowhere in a hurry as he is going to lose yardage here in a big way. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. No chance to get the field goal unit out there. And frustration going to set in as that is going to be how this first half will come to a close. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. started for the second half it was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard and no fireworks to start the half this will be a touchback the Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three this offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter well quarters number one and two entertaining we saw some good offense points put up Charles and all tied on the scoreboard and it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half and now here in the second half getting the ball first you've got to think hey we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half but if i'm a defensive player all i'm thinking is can i make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense and he takes us up to the 40 yard line before being corralled just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Here's Lawrence. He's got his big tight end, Farrell, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. 
Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. On oh, first and ten, it's Bigsby. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. This drive starts with two steps forward and now one back. A pair of first downs and here a loss of yardage. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, shoot it. And he found it all right. Took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's probably pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Here's Logan Cook now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25 to Will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot him. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start here with a handoff to White. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 55 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. A CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast and in the open field, but man, his first step is so quick too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast, the linebackers don't have a chance to react. Tackle made by Devin Lloyd, the linebacker. Uh, give him credit for trying, but there is no fooling the defense with that call. They were reading run, and they set up to stuff the run, and then executed. 38-yard line, second and nine. Opting to run again here with White. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Okay, didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. Third and two. Mayfield on play action. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 33. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Play fake, Mayfield. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So the pass incomplete in the end zone, but the flag comes out for interference. And now you're set up right on the doorstep of the goal line. One yard away changes what your play calls are going to be. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing out second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Again, this is right, and he's not going too far. In fact, stopped dead in his tracks at the three. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? 
something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the shack back at the 16-yard line. A nightmare on third and goal. He sacked and multiple players broke through the line to get him. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 33. And his kick here is good. And they take a 17-14 lead. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that. But let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 20. They'll look to ETN to start things out. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. Second and nine now from the 21. Now Lawrence to throw. He completes it to Jones. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. This now a third and four. Now Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Lawrence. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Dropped for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. But found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. On second down, Lawrence, this complete to Jones. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Here comes third down at seven. Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Nine yards that time. But they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. On first down, Lawrence. And his throw here is incomplete. You know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom 
bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. Straight ahead, ETN. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out on the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right to them. This will be play number nine in the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Here's Lawrence to throw. A looking in zone for Jones. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. But you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those, but the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. But I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? They keep it on the ground, wide again. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. On third down, Mayfield. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team, and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. Now a give up the middle. This is White, and he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain, so he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice, dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. On the draw, here's White. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing, slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. They run straight ahead here with White. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. To throw, Mayfield. He finds his target, it's Evans. And Evans will have a box first down as he'll get this down to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. They defer to White out of the shotgun. 
And he'll be taken down after a decent gain, and that will bring us to the end of this third quarter of play. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Ball on the 27, here's second and two. Now a give to White. And he stopped after a gain of one, not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. I haven't met a defense coordinator yet that thinks second and two is a fun situation to try and defend. Playbook is wide open for an offense partner. Nice job, hold him to one after that eight yard pickup on first down. The offense on third down, they're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. They need just a yard here, it's third and one. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Well, they brought the pressure and that meant man coverage behind him, so he's still able to complete the pass. Even as he took the hit, and that's what you have to do because I was just talking with a coach the other day and he said, look, it's not always going to be pretty back there. You're going to have to give me completions. Even when you're taking some hits, sometimes you have to be your own blitz control, for lack of a better term. Got to make completions, step up and make those throws, and he did that. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. It'll go as a gain of four, and that's going to set up a tough third and nine. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And he's going to get this to about the 20, but that is well short of what he needed. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. And this one is right through. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. to the main field goal. Here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they had a long drive going last time, but it stalled out. But still, maybe something positive to carry forward from that last drive. Well, a few different things that you carry forward. Number one, as you noted, they were moving it pretty well, so that gives them a lot of confidence. The second part is keep your defense off the field. Mm -hmm. gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. And last but not least, uh -oh. you've taken a good look at what you've done on offense, noted where the weaknesses are, and you know when you want to come back to them. Like when you're organized with your points. Well Point done. A, B, and C. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. ETN once more. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here. Third and five. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense is pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Here is third and five. Lawrence 
a throw. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. They're not out of it yet, but in order to come back, they need to play clean football the rest of the way. He makes the correct read there, passing on challenging a blanket coverage and getting the first down with his legs instead. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Here's second and ten. Looking to throw Lawrence. And that is caught. It's Ridley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And it's off the mark, incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. And to throw again is Lawrence. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. And now offensively it's third and 10. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. That is caught. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. ETN up the middle. Oh, no, he lost the football. Wow, that ball is not free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. On play action, Lawrence. That throw right side here going to be incomplete. I'll tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under the rest the entire game. And once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that will wound up incomplete. In search of eight yards on third down. They've already converted two of these on this drive, two for two. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. Even keeping the back in for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds and they'll spot it right at the 20. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. 
And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to it? Maybe his rhythm was confused. just off. He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. They'll go up the middle with White. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Third and eight. Mayfield to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Mayfield. That's to the sideline and incomplete. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. On a handoff, it's White. And he stopped immediately there. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Still needing 10 yards. Now it's third down. Mayfield looks to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. On the return, here's Agnew. Seven yards on the return after a punt of 39. And they will take over first and 10. The Jaguars getting set to go. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 28 yard line. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want. And other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. Here's Lawrence. And his throw is incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. He was out there waving his arm, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. Just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. This is brought in at the 21. A nice punt, but a good run back as well, 13 yards. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. 
Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays that are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. wide receiver great job it's tough to turn those upfield and go but he did a great job with it there really good balance really good body control and how about the end result a touchdown and he is not gonna get in there he stops short of the goal line and the lead is gonna stay right where it is Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Now Lawrence to throw. He'll find ETN out of the backfield. Calling a gain of three on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Short play like that in this situation, this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. Oh, and a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. And he will find his man on the outside. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. On second down, here's Lawrence. This will be caught just inside the 10. Well, that wasn't exactly a thing of beauty. I know they completed the pass, but look at the yardage lost. I mean... What does that make happy? 
That's why I don't play in PPR points per reception fantasy <laughs> leagues right there. <laughs> you really don't deserve upset. anything for that. But you get credit for it. Is yeah. that how that works? Yeah. Well, I know whoever has this team's defense, they were happy about that play. This crowd doing all they can. Here's third and goal. Now Lawrence. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, this defense has been physical all game long, and it certainly looks like they're not going to back off and make things any easier. They want to keep making life miserable for the receivers all the way to the end. Here it is, fourth and goal. Here we go, got to have it, Lawrence. Yeah, that is incomplete, but there is a flag. And on fourth down, this is a big call. So they say he went out of bounds, came back in, then touched the football. Can't be the first guy to touch it when you come back in bounds. That's why the penalty goes against him. Have to know where you are on the field. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. They stay on the ground with White. And the tackle made at the 13. He is well short of the first. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars down by 12. Exactly one minute remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. They'll throw on first down with Lawrence. He completes it to Ridley. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. On first down, Lawrence. Completes it to Evan Ingram. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. They'll come up first and 10 here. Here's Lawrence to throw. Shaquille Barrett in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Exactly what they were looking for. They've been giving up yardage. They've been letting them drive right downfield, but they got a sack right there. How about that for a little bit of revenge? They'll come up now. This is second and long. Lawrence. Oh, and that is incomplete. 
give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. This crowd turning up the decibel level. It's third and long. Now Lawrence. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. You get into these two-minute drill situations and you often got tired legs on the offensive line. But these defenders, they've been rotating in and out, and they're a little bit fresher and quicker. And the pressure there forced the incompletion. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. And it's intercepted at the goal line. There he goes, left side. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for Buccaneer TD. Little choice, Charles, but to go for it right there. And that pick six will be the icing on the cake. Yeah, you don't know how many more possessions you're going to get. So really, you're almost at the point of no option. You have to go for it. Bottom line, though, is... Defenders know that as well. They know you've got to throw the football. Had the right defense call, it will make a nice play on the ball. And that's all she wrote. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. Well, on one side of this, Charles, an impressive victory. On the other, I mean, you think about it, they scored in the first